Hello everyone, welcome to Informatica support videos. This is Ashik Salim from Informatica GCS and in this video, we will see how to configure SAP PAPI connector as a business service in cloud data integration. So the mentioned are the topics we will be going through in this support video. The first one is business service versus maplet. In that we will discuss like when to use the business service and when to use a BAPI maplet. And next is the prerequisite for SAP BAPI connector and the business service. And another will be a demo of the creation of BAPI connector as well as a business service. Yeah, moving on to the first topic. As we know, to consume a BAP from SAP in the cloud data integration, there are two methods. One is use it as a BAP maplet, and another one is used use it as a business service. So, the major differences between those are listed below. In the, in the terms of license, the BAP maplet is part of the SAP ECC OERP connector that is including the table connector idoc and BAPI, this maplet will also con will be part of that particular license group. For the business service, there is a separate license required that is SAP BAPI connector. And in the connection perspective, for the BAPI maplet, we'll, when we create the connection, we will choose the type as SAP. And under that, there is a subsection SAP connection type. In that, we will select SAP RFC or BAPI interface. For the business service, We'll choose SAP BAPI as a type and the authentication method as a BAPI connection. In the terms of API call, at the design time, the BAPI maplet uses a JCO based SAP JCO based calls, and at the runtime, it uses SAP NWRFC SDK RFC based calls. For the business service, both at the design time and runtime, it uses SAP JCO based calls only. And how the particular service is calling the SAP varies in both maplet and the business service. In the BAPI maplet, there, are, there is an uh, option called integration ID and if we give multiple integration IDs, we can have multiple calls to the SAP system. In the business service, since this particular integration ID option is not available, the calls are made made based on the parent key phone key relationship in the perspective of support all the BAPIs except the ones with the table type that is a T type is supported in the BAPI maplet uh, but all the BAPIs even the ones including the table type is used in the business service so the BAPIs with the T type should only be created as a business service and the BAPIs without the T type we have an option of using it as a maplet or a business service and we have to configure it based on our use case. Then moving on to the prerequisite for the for the connection. First thing is we have to verify if the required license are available for the SAP BAPI connector. In this screenshot you can see this SAP BAPI that particular connector license is needed for this connection and business service. Next step is to download and configure the SAP JCO libraries for BAPI integration. As mentioned, the calls, uh, the API calls are JCO based, so we have to configure the JCO libraries. These these details are captured in the product documentation. Uh, yeah, this documentation you can see all these details are captured where to place these libraries, which libraries need to be placed, and the property that need to be set to the data integration server so that it take. These uh, those compromise the prerequisite for the con connection, and we will now move on to the demo. Uh, this is my administrator screen where I will be creating the connection for the SAP BAPI connector. So I'm going to create a new connection. Here you have to give a name for the connection. 
so I'm just giving a name then we have to select the type as mentioned earlier the type will be SAP BAP B the runtime environment I need to select the secure agent which I am going to use for this particular connection we have to ensure that for this particular secure agent this connector is already enabled and for the authentication we have to select the BAP B connection the username will be the username of the ID I will be using to log into SAP while running this particular connection I will give the credential for the connection also here then the host name of the SAP system the client code the language is optional this is system number or the instance number and that we have two more options that is SAP additional parameters and JCO trace so in case of any connection issues we want to troubleshoot we can enable the JCO trace and we can set the JCO trace level and SAP additional parameters and also if you are using the load balancing connection the load balancing parameters needs to be given at the SAP additional parameters so whatever we give in the SAP additional parameter will take precedence we can do a test connection from here so the test connection will be just a big test so it will just check whether this particular host name uh, or the SAP system is reachable then I will save this particular connection the connection has been saved successfully then moving on to creating the business service we'll go for new the component will be business service so I will give a name for the business service in the connection I will select the connection that I have just just now created also in the business service there is an additional option compared to the maplet that is enable dynamic refresh what this does is it refreshes the metadata of the BAP every time the process is run so it di any changes in the BAP will be reflected at the runtime the only thing is that we have to ensure that our particular mapping is compatible with this change otherwise it will fail with error we f then we have to go for the select operation and in the source operation we have to select click on select here we have to give the full name of the VAP if we give the partial name it might not show so I'm searching for a VAP so this is a the VAP I'm using in this example is a standard VAP with a table type and as mentioned earlier if it is table type we have to go with the business service only can see the BAP is loaded and the name is editable as well as the description so I'm just going with this one now even OK you can see under the operation this one is loaded and if I go for configure you can see all the details regarding the particular business service so business service mainly has three components that will be a request section is where it takes the inputs the response section that is where the output rows will be coming and a fault section the fault section is identical to the response section only difference is that like any kind of faults or errors in the rows that the output rows cannot accept it will move to the fault section so you can see in the request section there is import parameters within the import parameter there are table type which we have already mentioned so it is working fine here without any issues and in the table input we can see all the tables in the particular BAP similarly for the response we can see the export parameters here and the table all the table outputs here and as I mentioned earlier the fault will be an identical row to the response section and uh, whatever rows that have faulted or errored out will be coming as part in the fault rows which we can map to see which were the rows that are rolled out or projected.
also giving ok for this one and saving this so this is how we import a BAPI and additionally uh, this is the BAPI in the SAP system only thing we have to note is whatever in the import section will be coming as part of the request section and the export will be part of response and since all the tables in this BAPI are mentioned in the table section only it will come as part of both response and request and we have to map it accordingly so that it takes up the proper values and does the function which we need this concludes the demo we can refer to the below documentation for more details on the configuration as well as how to use that particular BAPI business service which we have imported in a, in a mapping this is the same documentation I had shown you earlier we would love to hear from you regarding this video as well as the other support videos please write to us on support videos at informatica.com or you can contact us through our twitter handle that's all for this video thank you everyone